How's it going guys? Panther Films here and today we're going to be reacting to Season 1, Episode 2 of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. This episode is titled Superhuman Law. The last episode was basically the introduction of She-Hulk into the MCU. We got to see how she became She-Hulk, how she got to control like her powers a little bit, how she interacted with Bruce Banner, like how he, you know, he was telling her like this is how you control it, this is what you need to do. And basically she's in a way kind of like a better version of Hulk, so to speak, cuz her powers took less time to learn while Bruce had to go through all that shit he's been through. However, I think Jen's better at like controlling her powers because maybe it's like a fuse of their DNA that makes it better somehow. And the fact that he's smart Hulk now, it's probably got some kind of influence there. And the reason Jen turned into She-Hulk in the first place was because of a Sakaar ship dropping out of the sky, basically, and looking for Bruce because, you know, Wagner Rocky left the planet. And they need their, you know, champion back, so to speak. So maybe it could be a setup for, like, World War Hulk, right? And before the Sakaar ship dropped out of the sky, Jen and Bruce were discussing Captain America being a virgin. For some mad reason, I don't know why, Marvel jokes in 2022 have just came to this, I guess. But, turns out he wasn't a virgin because he actually slept, potentially, with a few girls in World War II. Alright, Steve, fair enough. And then at the end of the episode, we basically got to see Jen as a lawyer, and she was at a court hearing, and some woman just burst through the fucking wall, and there was a fight. Like, Jen transformed into She-Hulk, and now she's been exposed to the world as She-Hulk. So, it's going to be interesting to see how she balances the lawyer life and the superhero life she's trying to go for, or trying to avoid, so to speak. And maybe she'll get more feedback from Bruce on that. And obviously, you know, from the trailers, we've got Emil Blonsky, Abomination, and of course, Daredevil popping up later on. So, maybe they could appear this episode. Who knows? Might be pretty exciting. Yeah, overall, last episode was... Pretty decent. It was a nice introduction to She-Hulk slash Jen Walters. However, there was that one scene where she kind of lectured Bruce. And like, what? why are you lecturing Bruce? He's been through a lot of shit. He's tried to commit suicide. Like, didn't his father abuse him or some shit? Or did his father kill his mother? I can't remember the exact like origin of that. But he's been through some shit, okay? Like, come on. He's had to control another person in his mind for the past, like, how many years now? Like, come on. But yeah. Let's stop doolallying around with this shitty recap and get right into the fucking episode. Why the fuck is this episode like 20 something minutes? What the fuck, Marvel? And then she saves people at the end of the episode. Are they going to explain why she breaks the fourth wall or is it just f for fun? Bam, 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 bam. I feel like they should change it every episode, and it should be green in the back instead of red, but... Titania? Caused panic Titania? No, that's for somebody called She-Hulk, which can't possibly be what they're calling you. That was pretty quick for them to get the name. She's gonna transform. Just... Can't even exist without being a derivative of the Hulk. Neat little trick you pulled there, Walter. Nepotism. You knew it. Take a lap, Dennis. Oh, chick over there, I'm gonna go talk to it. Talk to it? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you could be an Avenger. Mm. Uh, Avengers even a thing anymore? Avengers Tower's gone, right? Actually, well, I guess you've got the Avengers compound, but that's fucked too, right? Right. <laughs> Jen, can I talk to you for a moment? <laughs> what the fuck? Are, are you okay? You need... I love how she just goes immediately to drunk. <laughs> you did the right thing, but it unraveled our case. I'm sorry, oh. Jen. Well, like, so there was no win-win there, like, what? I have to let you go. What? But this makes you a liability the fuck? for the DA's office. You're firing me? Huh? Like, it was a celebration for her. Like, She-Hulk... Oh, attorney for hire. Isn't that, like, Luke Cage and fucking Iron Fist? Heroes for hire? We just can't take the risk of a sideshow. Two. Mm. Here, gg and might be hired. Eye on the prize. Come on. Offbeat Seriously. jobs. Couldn't she be, like, an Avengers lawyer? If they get into trouble? Oh, we're gonna see a mum and dad. Well, they know, right? She said it last episode. I already told everyone, so it won't be awkward. The fire, Chad. 
<laughs> Instantly. I told him that my daughter was a superhero. He hadn't heard of you, but I gave him your number. Now, Jen, uh, that Hawkeye hmm. guy. Hawkeye. What happens to those arrows of his? I mean, does he go around and collect them when he's done? Yeah. I mean, that's that's, that's what others. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of things I could uh, use your help with before you go. No, I'm not okay, but I'm okay with not being okay. I hate that it got revealed in this way, like in front of the whole world. Like I get fired for saving people, and now I can't get another job because of it. You didn't tell me. What are all the it's kind of quick, though, wasn't it? Like she just instantly was put into a situation like that. Thing that you were dreading happened, but look, you're still standing. And now you get to keep moving on. Miss Walters, it's nice to see you again. That's fucking, um... Veg from Walking Dead. That's the only thing I kind of know him from. I'd like to offer you a job. <laughs> Is this a joke? I'll never joke. Alright. Is he a scroll? What the fuck? I will only do it if I can hire my own paralegal. You start Monday. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> she's an absolute mess. She's all over. Why did she just go through the revolving door before? Like, what the fuck? We just started a superhuman law division, and I want you, well, the She Hulk, to be. Superhuman law division. That's kind of what I was thinking. We are the first. <laughs> Ugh, the CGI the there is a little rough, but whatever. Everyone around here is always going to think this is the only reason I got the job. It's so unfair. These dodos never had oh, to deal God. with this on their first day at work. Did you not hear her say any of that? Why are you in Hulk form? That is a look. Oh. I just look at everything it's getting us. It's getting big ass windows. Yay, windows. Woohoo. Hi there, I'm Pug. I'm also in the superhuman law division. Oh, I'm, I'm just. What kind of accent is that? I'm the a welcome basket. <laughs> So, uh, Wait, is she in LA? I thought she was in New York, but I guess not. I guess that makes sense though, because the, the news was LA, right? Your first case is the parole of Emil Blonsky. So you know there's a lot of controversy surrounding his possible release. This is extremely high. Why would they release him though after the shit he did? In like, he fucked up Harlem. Because this man tried to kill my cousin Bruce. Yeah, that's quite all right. What? Mr. If you don't take the case, then you don't have a job here. It's interesting that her hair's kind of got like a green dye to it. Hey, we're gonna see Tim off. Oh. What the? We haven't seen Abomination since Shang-Chi. But why was he out of prison in Shang-Chi? Was Shang-Chi set after this? It's not here. In the event of oh. injury or death. Did she even sign anything then? Spider was seen in like in episode two. What the fuck? Interesting that he transformed back. Namaste. <laughs> Does that mean that you can't turn into the abomination anymore or No we can probably. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? Your cousin. Hmm. You know, I, I tried to kill him. Yeah. So let's get that out of the way. I was under direct orders from your government. But then you went on a destructive rampage in Harlem. Because they pumped me full of that super soldier serum. I thought I, I, thought I was the good guy. I have here uh, various haikus that I've written oh boy. to each of my victims. I just want to move on with my life. Curious if he's playing a... Because what I remember from Incredible Hulk, I don't think he was like influenced by the super soldier serum that much it's like what he wanted he wanted that power Agent oh we're seeing boost again that phone is like tiny in his hand isn't rehabilitation something that we should strive for as a society That's what you but don't none want. of that matters so, if you just just stop actually blonsky wrote me a really nice letter a while back <laughs> said that fight was so many years ago i'm a completely different person now literally that's nice all not to edward norton right there <laughs> And the fucking recast. What they end up naming you anyway? She Hulk. She Hulk, attorney at law. He said the name of the show, Volk Credits. Coming to LA anytime soon? Fuck no. Wait, where is he? What the fuck? What? Wait, what the fuck? Is he going to Chicago again? What the fuck? Take a look at the news right now. 
Yes. Did he break out? After shocking footage leaked showing the abomination participating in what appears to be an under Oh my god. There we go. There's a tie in. That sucks. <laughs> I was waiting for it because it's like he was still in prison, right? The fact that that like Tatiana thing never came back, it's just kind of random. Like, what was that even about? Maybe like Wong taking Blonsky slash Abomination into that fight club is just so Blonsky can get rid of some stress. What a random I forgot his name. Yeah, okay. Vanless folk. Now, first of all, what the fuck is happening with Bruce? Is he going back to Sakaar? Like, are we going to get, like, a World War Hulk film? Also, you know, that little nod to him being a different man. Or a different person. Like, come on, dude. Wait! When she was on the PC, like, at the beginning of the episode, when she was looking for jobs, there's... Like a side, like, related article that says, like, man fights with metal claws in barb wall. Wolverine? Now, that's got to be, like, a little Easter egg there. There's no way that's actually Wolverine. There's, there's no way they're teasing Wolverine already. Surely. Why there is a giant statue of a man sticking out of the ocean? Well, finally, they fucking address that. But, clearly, this is evident that... It's set just before Shang-Chi, or around the same time as Shang-Chi, because, you know, the prison break thing. Was there nobody watching Abomination, though? Like, in the same room as him? Like, when Wong, like, teleported him? I don't know. I have to go back to Shang-Chi and see, like, if you could see through the portal and what it was. Maybe it's, like, a prison cell or something. Overall, like, I think this episode was very short. I just really couldn't get into it that much because by the time I got into it, the episode was over, you know? But it was cool to see, like, her balancing, like, She-Hulk and her Jen Walters persona, right? I'm kind of glad they addressed the Eternals thing because it feels like Eternals was so detached from the MCU. Like, there were some references here and there, but overall, it feels like everything that happened in Eternals didn't really matter that much, and now at least they're kind of referencing it. But maybe it's because, like, they're filming the shows at the same time, so it's like, well, we don't know what's going on in Eternals because we're filming this show at the same time, so we'll see. But I guess now we're finally catching up to what happened in Eternals, or all the other shows were just set before Eternals. We don't really know the timeline of Phase 4 properly yet anyway. It's all over the fucking place. It's going to be interesting to see how they introduce Daredevil because, like, this show is set in L.A., right? Daredevil's in Hell's Kitchen, unless he goes to L.A. for an episode or something, I don't know. I mean, we got Emil Blonsky in the second episode of the show, which I didn't expect. I'm glad we kind of, like, caught up to the Shang-Chi timeline now. Because you could, like, have the prison break, then the Shang-Chi scene, then this, you know, the continuation of the story. It's good to see Jen's family, you know, she has people that care about us, so to speak, I mean... They kind of care about She-Hulk and they kind of... It looks like they use her her powers to do chores around the house, basically. <laughs> I mean, sure, it, it works, I guess. But I also kind of feel sorry for Bruce. Like, he's going to space and going back to potentially Sakaar, right? Because that looks like a Sakaar ship. He's, he's got no one. He really doesn't. Like, Nat's dead. Tony's gone. Thor's gone. You know, Hawkeye's retired. Like, his father beat his fucking mother. Like, he's been through some shit. He just has, I guess, the Grandmaster. <laughs> I don't know if I believe Blonsky. Maybe maybe he is kind of reformed, and him just doing the Fight Club is, like I said, like him just venting out and releasing anger. Because Wong just comes in every now and again and is like, yeah, come on, I'll, I'll help you out. Relieve some stress. It's also interesting that... Abomination's kind of changed, because originally he was just kind of this weird, like, turtle-looking-ass creature. Like, he was disgusting. And now he's a bit more like the comic version, right? He's got the fins and everything, so... I wonder if they'll explain that, like, why he's changed. A part of me wants to believe Blonsky, but the fact that he was the villain in a previous film, and we haven't seen him since that film, and then suddenly he's, like, a good guy, I don't buy it, dude. I think there's more to it. 
has to be. Because it, it's just what he said, like him saying, you know, it was a super soldier seven that caused him to act the way he did. I don't know if I believe that because in the Incredible Hulk film, it's like he really wanted the power of the Hulk so he could fight him and beat him. He just got desperate for the win. Yeah, overall, pretty fine episode. Not the best, not the worst. It was just a nice, fun ride, so to speak. Just a shame it was so short. Like the fact that they pitched it as a 30-minute comedy series, and then this episode barely scratched 20 minutes, half the episode was fucking credits. Like what, what are you doing, Marvel? You know, it being so short means there's not a lot to talk about either, in terms of a review. Other than like maybe that Wolverine thing, but I just feel like that's an Easter egg, nothing more. But yeah, I guess that wraps up my shitty review. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Ta-ta! And... Fair.